in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or on One Spot Media. We're also live on GoJamaica.com. The subjects for today are Principles of Accounts and Mathematics for CSEC and for CAPE we have management of business. I am Mrs. Chambers Hogg, and we start with principles of accounts. Our focus today is the double entry system of accounting. However, before we delve in the lesson, let's just set the foundation, of course, our objectives. Are you ready? Let's go. At the end of the lesson, students, you should be able to define clearly the term double entry. Explain clearly the double entry principle. State aptly the double entry principles governing assets, capital, and liabilities. Last but not least, Students, you should be able to apply the double entry principle rules for assets, capital, and liabilities in posting to the ledgers. Now what I want you to do, students, I want you to be very observant now and focus on these pictures as I ask you a few questions. All right, the first one. How many ends have each domino tile? Are the numbers the same at the end of each tile? Look carefully, be very observant. You and I use WhatsApp all the time. Looks familiar? How many blue ticks? I know you read my message. Haven't replied, but how many blue ticks? How many pieces of burger meat can you see? Which number is common for all the pictures, students? Which number? I'm hearing you. Two, very good. Can you give me a word that begins with the letter D? That also means two. What? Oh, yes, you're correct. Double. All right. So, if two means double and double means two, what do you think then the term double entry means. Think about it. Hence, double entry means two entries. We're setting the foundation, you know. Catch it. Don't let it go. In accounts, the double entry principle states that for every debit entry, there is a corresponding credit entry. So heavy, don't it? It light like cork. Just make sure you have your notebook, your pen, your calculator. This is class time. Work with me, listen to the explanation, and post your questions. The double entry principle states that for every debit entry, there is a corresponding credit entry. Let's see if we can understand this a little better. For every debit entry, there's a corresponding credit entry. So explain further. But what's the reason for having a debit entry as well as a credit entry? What's the reason for this? Very important. In accounts, we have what is known as the accounting equation. That is the foundation for principles of accounts as students. And at all times, you know that an equation has two sides, a left side and a right side, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. We always have to make two entries when a transaction occurs so as to keep the equation balanced. Anything that we give to the left, we also have to give it to the right. 
or in accounting language, anything that we give to the debit, we give it to the credit. Now, we need to keep the accounting equation balanced at all times. That is assets equal capital plus liabilities. And again, anything we give to the left hand side, we should also give to the right hand side, which is a credit. Also, students, when a transaction occurs, one transaction affects two items. One transaction affects two items. It therefore means that we will have to record this one transaction twice. You hear me? We have to record the one transaction twice because one transaction affects two items. In recording it twice, we have to record once as a debit entry and the second one as a credit entry. Now, I just told you that one transaction affects two items. In a business, these items can be classified as either assets, capital, liabilities, expenses, or revenues. However, for today's lesson, we'll be focusing on assets, liabilities, and capital. Miss, I use some term in a class today. A miss mean. No worry. Just make sure you have your notebook and you're listening. Soon clear. Assets, capital, and liabilities. I'm going to introduce to you my little concept to help you to remember. Something that we call, I call the OOO term. You know, like Santa Claus, OOO, all right. These assets can be grouped as what the business own, what the business owe, or the owner's investment. Let's look at the ones that the business own. Assets. These are resources owned by a business. That's the first O. Now, there are various assets or examples of assets in a business. Mainly, I should say, three groups of assets. We have what is known as the fixed assets, the current assets, and also we have what is known as intangible assets. But let's just go back a little to our fixed assets. Our fixed assets students are really those that will remain in the business for a relatively long period of time. Fixed assets. Those that will remain in the business for a relatively long period of time. I'm trying to get back to where we had begun. Now, listen as I carry you through. Examples of fixed assets would be like motor van fixtures, fittings, they're going to be in the business for a very long period of time. Then we have current assets, such as the business stock, its debtors, its bank balance, and its cash in hand. Then of course, students, we have the non-current, sorry, we have the intangible assets. The intangible assets now, students, a lot of time we don't even recognize that they're assets because we can't really see them nor touch them. But guess what? The business own them. Assets such as investments or goodwill. So therefore, we have just looked at all the resources that the business own and we call them what? Assets. Now, we're going to look at the second group of assets, the second group of items that the business can actually have within it. We established it that the business own assets, 
we also established that the business may owe some items. Listen carefully to the term. We have owe and we have own. The resources that the business owe are those that we call liabilities. Good? Now, liabilities basically are those resources that the business have to pay back. They've not paid for it yet or they've not finished paying for it yet. They owe it. Then, of course, we have owner's investment or what we call capital. We will be going into looking at the double entry for each of these group. All right? Are you ready? Hold on to your pen. Hold on to your paper. We are, we are going to write. Now, students, what I want you to do is to take a picture of what is on the board. Because when we return, class time will continue. Don't go too far. More class time when we return. Stay with us. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste.
Welcome back. Let's continue where we left off. Students, as before, as said before, examples of assets include investments and goodwill, which are normally classified as intangible assets. We also mentioned fixed assets and current assets. Of course, technology thought I wanted to throw off the class, but it now got stop with from learn. All right, so let's continue. I want you to take a shot, a screenshot of what's on the board, because we'll be using this to do the to post or make double entries for assets, capital, and liabilities. Take a screenshot. All right, good. Moving on. On the board here, of course, you recognize that it is outlined nicely for you, the groups of accounts, how we will record them in terms of double entry in the ledger. Going to come back to it. Now, students, listen. As it relates to assets, remember, we're doing double entry. Whenever there's an increase in assets, we debit the account. Whenever there's a decrease in assets, we credit the account. Remember, I'd established it that we have to make a debit entry and a credit entry because one transaction affects two items and at all times we need to keep the equation balanced. Good. Now, whenever there's an increase in assets, we debit the account. So what happens when there's a decrease in assets? Whenever there's a decrease in assets, we do the opposite. We credit the account. Now, let's look at a transaction in which we would apply such a principle. 2017 February 2, we bought a motor van by cash, $20,000. February 2, 2017, we bought by cash a motor van for $20,000. I want you to reason with me. The first thing you need to do is to pick out which two items are affected by this transaction because we need to record the transaction twice based on those two items. We bought a motor van by cash. Students, it is usually very easy to recognize the two items by thinking, what did I receive and what did I give up in order to receive that item? So we bought a motor van. What did we receive? Motor van. And we used cash. What did we give up to get the motor van? Cash. So the two items that would be affected by this one transaction would be motor van and cash. Continuing. Did the business increase in motor vans or did it decrease in motor vans when they bought the motor van? I believe that you know the answer. Yes, there was an increase in motor van, and motor van is an asset. The big question is, how will this be entered in the account, in the ledger? Now, students, in the ledger, we normally find accounts. In class, your teacher would introduce you to this paper, not soft copy now, but paperback ledger. The ledger is so designed 
for you to draw up what we call T accounts. The T account would basically carry two sides, a debit side and a credit side, as you will see me demonstrate a little later. But before the demonstration, remember that we have basically three types of ledgers. Remember, we're going to deal with different, different transactions and we don't want the confusion. So normally we maintain three different types of ledgers. We have what is known as the general ledger. In the general ledger, you will have accounts of capital, expenses, revenues, liabilities, and assets that are not personal. You will also have what we call the purchases ledger. In the purchases ledger, we will find all our personal creditors, everybody that we have bought goods from on credit. In the sales ledger, we will have what is known as our personal debtors account. Everybody to whom we have sold goods to on credit. So remember, we have three types of ledgers. Good. Now for the demonstration of posting to the account. Here is a format of the T account. Now, what you basically will recognize is that the T account has two sides as said before. The left side is known as the debit side, standard, it doesn't change. The right side is known as the credit side, standard, it doesn't change. Where you see name of account, you will put the specific name of the item to which the account belongs. Heading, date, details, folio, amount on the debit side, and it is repeated on the credit side, date, details, folio, amount. Now, again, whenever there's an increase in asset, we debit the account. Whenever there's a decrease in asset, we credit the account. Hence, for assets, students, the debit side increase is the addition side. The credit side decrease, it will be the subtraction side. Let's look at this transaction to demonstrate. May 1, the business, TVJ, bought motor van by check. Which two items are affected? Motor van, yes, and also check, good. All right, so you look for the nouns, or you basically look for what you're giving up and what you're receiving to find the two items. If you notice, where at the top to the center, I have the name of the account, which is motor van. Good. I'm about to post this transaction in the motor van account, the first of the two entries. Students, motor van is an asset. What does the rule say? Whenever there's an increase in asset, we do what? Whenever there's an increase, I'm using the arrow now, whenever there's an increase in asset, we are going to debit the account. That simple means that we're going to actually record the information or post the information on the debit side. So I've started. The transaction took place on May 1, 2017. So in the date column, I have here May 1, 2017. What comes next? In the amount section, the motor van was bought for $20,000. So I have $20,000. Transaction not finished posting. If you notice, in the details, I have bank. Can you tell me why I have bank? in the details section of the motor van account. Some smarted, come on, tell me. I'm recording the transaction in the motor van account and I have in the details bank. Very good. Simply because bank 
was affected along with motor van. So at all times in the details, you must write the name of the other item that was affected by the one transaction. So in the motor van account, in the details section, you will write bank. And if it were the bank account, in the details section, you would write motor van. So this is how we would make a debit entry to show an increase in asset. Moving on. So I've made one entry for asset or for this transaction. Let's go to the bank account, the other item that was affected. Remember when you see check, it is linked to bank. So here I have the bank account. What am I going to do? I've made a debit entry. The principle says whenever there is an increase with debit and whenever there's a decrease we credit. Bank is also an asset. When we use the checks to buy the asset student, do we have more checks at the bank or in the bank or do we have less? Less, of course. So therefore, we have a decrease in asset. What does the rule say again when there's a decrease in asset? Whenever there's a decrease in asset, we will do what? Credit the account. Good. So it's simple mean that we're going to record the same transaction on the credit side of the bank account. Let's see how we will do this quickly. In the date column, we write back the same date, May 1, 2017. What will I put in the details column? Think. What's the amount? The same 20,000. So, in the amount column, we put $20,000. And in the details column, we write motor van, the other item that was affected along with bank. Now, students, if you notice in the folio, I have GL, which stands for General Ledger. That simply means that the motor van account will be found in the General Ledger. We're moving on. So this is what a bank account would look like on May 1. On May 2, we sold fixtures for check. So TVJ decided to get rid of some old fixtures. So them sell it, sell them in exchange for check. Which two items are affected? Fixtures and check. Look for the nouns or what you're getting and what you're giving up. Now, fixtures and checks are also classified as assets. When you sell the fixtures, do you have more fixtures or do you have less? You've sold. You have less. Good. The rule again for assets. Whenever there's a decrease, what do you do? Credit. Good. But you sell in exchange for check. So you get some checks. Do you have more checks or do you have less checks? More checks. Good. So your bank balance will do what? Increase. So one is increasing and the other one is decreasing. How will we post that? In the bank account, we've sold for check. Bank is an asset. So we're going to increase in bank balance. So I go on the increasing side for the asset account, which is the debit side. May 2, 2017, I put in my date. I sold for an amount of $100. Good. And what did I sell? Fixtures. So in the bank account, you put the name of the other item that was affected. Good. The fixtures account can be found in the general ledger. And you'll recognize that I made up a page number, eight. Now we're moving. I've made one entry for this transaction. How many do I need to make in total? Two. I need to make now the corresponding credit entry. In which account? The fixtures account. Good. Now, 
Now, in your notebook, what I want you to do for me is to draw up the fixtures account and make that entry to show that you've decreased in asset. So you're going to draw it up, put in your date, put your details, right? And you will also put your amount. Make a credit entry because you would have decreased. Now we want to look quickly at May 6. May 6, we bought furniture on credit from Courts Jamaica Limited. May 6, we bought furniture on credit from Courts Jamaica Limited. Students, in buying on credit from Courts Jamaica Limited, do we owe courts or do we basically don't have any balance at courts? We owe courts. What did I teach you was the term that we use to represent items that we owe. Liabilities. Good. What does the rule say for liabilities? The double entry rule for liabilities simply state that whenever there is An increase in liabilities, we're going to credit. That's opposite to assets. And whenever there's a decrease in liabilities, we will debit. That's also opposite to assets. I should tell you that both assets and that both liabilities and capital, as you will see later, share the same double entry principle. So let's zero in on this one. We're going to go quickly. We've bought furniture on credit from Courts Jamaica Limited. Now students, courts would now be what we call a liability. Therefore, when we owe more money at courts, it simply means that we have increased in liability. We will therefore need to credit, to credit court's account because we have increased in liabilities. Let's see what we will do here. On May 6, we will go to court's account. We'll put in our date and in the details, we will put in furniture and we will also put in the total of $20,000. If you notice again, beside furniture, in the folio, there's GL because the furniture account is found in the general ledger. Also, the furniture account itself, being an asset, would be debited. So you can clearly see the debit entry and the credit entry taking effect. Please, students, write down, study your principles. So this is what court's account would look like on May 6. On the credit side, because it's a liability, the entry was made when we increased in liabilities. Now... We happen on May 15 to pay courts $2,000. In paying courts, we are going to decrease in liabilities. Let's go back to this. Whenever there's a decrease in liabilities, we are going to debit. So here we go on the debit side of the account, and we will put in our date, 2017, May 15, the amount $2,000. And what do you think will come in the details? The two items that were affected were courts and cash. So in the details section, we are going to have cash. Good? Not bad at all. Practice makes perfect. Now here's a trivia for you. What are the correct entries to be made in the books if T. Tom lent us $1,000 cash? Would we credit cash, debit bank, debit T. Tom, credit cash? Debit cash, credit T Tom, credit T Tom, or debit cash? You tell me. Answer is coming up. All right. Now, students, capital, you must remember, refers to resources invested in the business by the owner. What I need you to do for me is to practice some transactions relating to capital when I would have taken you through the principles. Now, for assets, whenever there's an increase in asset, we debit the account. 
whenever there's a decrease, we credit the account for liabilities. Whenever there's an increase, we credit. Whenever there's a decrease, we debit. For capital, you follow the same principles as liabilities. Whenever there's an increase in capital, you credit. Whenever there's a decrease, you debit. I have on the board here a demonstration of a capital transaction. I'm going to have you just take a screenshot. When next we meet for class, we can go through. But the transaction reads, May 25, the owner introduced a further amount of cash into the business, $10,000. Follow the double entry principle and post. You can take a screenshot of mine and then check your answer against it. All right. Here's the answer to trivia number one. If we bought goods paying by check, how would it have affect, what effect would it have on the business assets? Of course, it would increase our stock and decrease our bank balance. And the answer to trivia number two. What are the correct entries to be made in the books if T. Tom lent us $1,000? Debit cash. Credit T Tom. Key point remember, the increasing side for assets is opposite to that of capital and liabilities. In your practice, you will see that. Now, just imagine that we have a house with three tenants assets, capital, and liabilities. Now, assets actually occupy the left side, capital and liabilities occupy the right side. Remember now, the left side, the increasing side, will be for the one who occupies the left side, and that is asset. Think of the equation, assets equal capital plus liabilities. Liabilities and capital would be on the right-hand side, and of course, it therefore means that the right side, which is the credit side for them, would be the increasing side. So here's a T account for assets. Just to reinforce, the increasing side for asset is the debit. The decreasing side is the credit. For capital and liabilities, it's opposite. Increasing side, of course, is the credit. And in subsequent class, you will learn that sometimes assets may get a visitor at home, which is known as expenses, which share its increasing side. And also revenues will, get a, will become capital and liabilities visitor, with, which also share their increasing side. But that's for our next class. Students, we have basically learned today how to post to the ledger using the double entry. We would have had some technical glitches, but don't allow that to, uh, to not let you grasp. Sit down, read over your double entry principles, and do some practice. Remember, your double entry principles are important in order to master the topic. That is it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, send them in to either Television Jamaica's Facebook page at Television Jamaica or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica, or simply use the hashtag TVJ class time. CSEC Mathematics is after the break, so stay tuned. God bless. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu.